hidden lakes. So it took working at a champagne restaurant to find out that salt water doesn't freeze. We, well, it does, but at very, very low temperatures. We used to use it to hyper chill wine that was in storage because salty water can get colder than zero degrees Celsius without freezing. The saltier the water, the colder it gets because salt lowers the freezing point because it interferes with the water molecules ability to form crystals, which is at least one reason why Deep Lake in Antarctica has stayed liquid for millions of years. It sits 55 meters below the sea level and the salinity of the water increases as it gets deeper. Despite temperatures reaching minus 20 degrees Celsius, the lake remains in a liquid state, though entirely uninhabitable, or so they thought. Scientists have covered at least four microbe species living in the water, but that's about the only thing that can. Because the water can reach much colder temperatures than the sea, even penguins wouldn't survive for long. They have been caught swimming in it, but it would feel to them what it feels like for us jumping into an icy lake for a polar dip. You know, if they stay too long, it would probably kill them. How the lake formed exactly still has scientists baffled, but they're probably, but, but let's be honest, they'll, they'll probably figure it out. <laughs> Number nine. Rainforests? Press rewind on the world for long enough and you would arrive in a world of opposites, which includes Antarctica being closer to a rainforest than an icy tundra. Scientists gather that before Antarctica was an expanse of ice, the region may have been host to lush forests, diverse wildlife, and even early human civilizations. But why do they think that? Scientists began discovering fossilized wood, leaf impressions, and signs of tropical trees. On top of that, they have found tons of fossils of marine animals, dinosaurs, and birds from the Cretaceous period, so you can see how they deduced the existence of some kind of forest-like area. Scientists are now looking to Antarctica for clues about evolution that we may have missed. So far, they have discovered a 50 million year old sperm cell on the egg case of a long extinct worm species, which is extraordinary if you think about it. Man. Like, talk about resilience, buddy. <laughs> buddy. Number eight, mountains. Imagine the ice melts away, and beneath those massive, vast sheets of ice is an entire mountain range. Well, guess what? You don't have to imagine it, it's real. Hiding out beneath a two to four kilometer thick sheet of ice are what's called the Gamberts of Mountains. They stretch across 1,200 kilometers and rise about a third of the height of Mount Everest. But how did an entire mountain range that high get covered in a sheet of ice? When Soviet geophysicist Grigory A. Gambert made the discovery in 1958, he had the same question. Though he hasn't actually seen the mountains, covered by ice, remember? But was able to figure out that they were there by measuring the abnormal gravity fluctuations in the area. They have since used radars to interpret the physical attributes of the mountains, but how did they end up that far beneath the ice? The mountains are around a billion years old, and scientists figure they should have eroded away by now. But the most popular theory as to why they are still there is that the erosion process just paused as soon as the ice sheet got large enough. To picture how immense this is, just imagine that the Rocky Mountains are covered by a sheet of ice. Astounding. Number seven, dangerous bacteria. Have you ever heard of Pandora's box? Well, it may surprise you to learn that Antarctica might very well just be that. Scientists have discovered microbes beneath Antarctic ice that could threaten life on planet Earth. Maybe. Ice is an excellent preservation method, and the 420,000 year old microbes may only need to melt in order to come back to life. Now, it is equally likely that these microbes could be entirely harmless, but there is a chance that they won't be. But the fact that it could be so dangerous has scientists keeping tabs on them as closely as possible. Still, it sounds like a Stephen King apocalyptic horror film waiting to happen, so who the heck knows? <laughs> we didn't see the past two years happening, did we? Number six, Blood Falls. Blood falls. Get your mind out of the gutter. Sounds pretty terrifying, as it would have been for the person who first discovered it. In the McMurdo Dry Valley, there is a bright crimson river that cuts between Taylor Glacier and Lake Bonnie. It looks like someone went to town on their dinner and just let the bodies drain into the water. But thank goodness there is a scientific explanation. Beneath the glacier, there is a very briny lake that was cut off from the atmosphere and is three times as salty as seawater, meaning, as we know now, that it can't really freeze, but it can, I guess, at a very 
low level. At first, it was suspected that a kind of red algae had infiltrated the glacier, causing the vibrant red hue, but in actuality, the Briny Lake is incredibly high in iron, and since it was cut off from oxygen for millions of years, the red color is a product of the reaction the water has to the oxygen and the sunlight from the atmosphere. The iron in the water oxidizes and rusts, like your car, which brings out the vibrant red illusion that is Blood Falls. Number five, ancient meteorites. You may think meteorites and asteroids are dangerous, but something far less obvious may cause more damage than a doom rock. 430,000 years ago, smack dab in the middle of the Pleistocene epoch, a massive space rock the size of a soccer field crashed through Earth's atmosphere, but instead of smashing into the Earth, an air burst happened. Just before it slammed into the ice, it burst into pieces exploding in the sky and launched a superheated jet of gas. The explosion caused massive amounts of damage, scattering pieces of itself everywhere, which is how scientists were able to deduce that this happened. They found pieces of the asteroid across the ice and used chemical clues to link the particles together. They were also able to determine that the force of the blast was about, get ready, a thousand times stronger than the nuclear blast at Hiroshima, and that destroyed an entire city. So. And, and some, so imagine what would have happened if that happened today. Number four, oil guzzling fungi. So we mentioned that there might be a world ending microbes beneath the ice, but there also could be something that saves it. A unique kind of fungi has been found beneath the ice gorging on petroleum. What on earth could that possibly be used for, you ask? Well, if these fun little guys, if these fun little guys love eating oil so much, then imagine how happy they'd be to dive into, let's say, an oil spill. They were first encountered when scientists came upon fuel containers left by explorers and immediately began studying them. Fungi don't usually just flourish at parties, they flourish in warm wooded regions, but perhaps the fungus that used to thrive in the rainforest we mentioned, they evolved to thrive in the icy bearing conditions as well. So cool, we could learn so much about evolution that way. Number three, top three. Singing ice. Yup, the ice is singing. After scientists installed seismic sensors in the ice to measure its behavior, they discovered a mysterious song. Well, more like a massive ice drum. And it sounds like this. The pitch changes based on the weather, though you wouldn't be able to hear it should you just stand on it. It's not audible to the human ear. But the humming occurs on the 500,000 square kilometer on the Ross Ice Shelf, about the size of France. The winds blowing across the snow dunes is what causes the humming, and scientists figure that this could be an even better way to keep tabs on how the ice is doing in relation to global warming. The ice is thinning due to global warming, and the song is almost a gift, an easier way to track the stability and vulnerability of the ice shelf. Sounds like nature is working with us to save itself. Number two, cosmic particles. A mystery capable of breaking physics. If that were possible, it would be found in Antarctica. Since March 2016, researchers have been furrowing their brows over two distinct events that shouldn't have happened. Physicists caught cosmic rays that burst out from the Earth, not from space. The rays were detected by ANITA, NASA's Antarctic Impulsive Transient Antenna, a balloon-borne antenna. The balloon is designed to find cosmic rays from outer space, and caused a lot of excitement when it caught them coming up from the Earth instead. The discovery even implied theories that could support parallel universes. What boggles scientists about this discovery is that two particles seem to be cosmic rays that blasted through the planet and back out the other side. They shouldn't be able to do that. They now suspect that they may be particles that defy the standard model of how particles are supposed to behave and maybe they're a new type of particle altogether. This is obviously a very simplistic explanation. It gets a lot more complicated and there's still more information out there, but still, really, really cool. And and last but not least, a hidden German base. There are several versions of this story, some even going so far as theorizing that World War II mustache man escaped there and didn't die in his bunker. Some theories even say that German intelligence encountered aliens and developed new weapons with their tech. But the one truth is that there was indeed a secret World War II German base in Antarctica. Apparently there was an expedition to establish a base as a whaling station in order to increase Germany's production of fat, which could be used for soap and mayonnaise and butter. 
The expedition was led by Alfred Richter and other theories suggest Adolf himself sent the expeditions to research ways Germany could become a self supporting country. Perhaps the reason was that innocent, but with the base having been abandoned 70 years ago, we will never know. Coming up in our number 10 spot, we have a throwing spear. A throwing spear that was approximately crafted over 10,300 years ago was discovered by Dr. Craig Lee from Montana State University in 2007. It was discovered in northern Wyoming. 10,300 years ago, holy moly. Just saying that is so trippy and hard to wrap my brain around the idea of people existing at that point. But in any case, this spear at first glance appeared just like a stick, but then after closer inspection, he discovered that it was a dart from a throwing spear. At this point, it is the oldest frozen artifact found yet. It's been a source of inspiration for others to continue the hunt for artifacts that are being revealed as a result of melting ice patches, and it certainly has created a sense of urgency for people to get hunting for these unbelievable items. In our number 9 spot, we have the Yukon Treasures. A size 4 moccasin shoe from 1400 years ago was found melting in the Yukon, and my inner shopaholic is super excited about it. So of course I had to include it on this list. Along with this shoe, two other items were found. A barbed antler projectile point from about 1200 years ago, and throwing darts from 9000 years ago. Apparently they were found by a husband and wife in 1997 who were hunting doll sheep in the Yukon Mountains when they smelt something extremely strange. It was dung. Yes poop from a caribou. But the thing is, caribou hadn't been in this area for many, many years, so they decided to inspect it. <laughs> Naturally? <laughs> I wouldn't. Anyways, I guess they discovered that the poop was from thousands of years ago that had frozen into ice, and close behind it were these artifacts that had melted along with it. Pretty wild. In our number 8 spot, we have animal hair rope. While out exploring the mountaintops of western Mongolia, archaeologist and researcher Isaac Hart of the University of Utah discovered something quite interesting that he felt would truly help with discovering more about the Mongolia people in ancient times. They discovered a finely woven piece of animal hair rope. This rope was first thought to have been dropped in the ice recently, however, after scientists performed some radiocarbon tests on it to see how old it was, it was proven to be more than 1500 years old. Wow, that's some old rope. In our number 7 spot, we have horn curls. On this same trip, looking for more artifacts, Isaac Hart found some Argali sheep skulls and horn curls from 1500 years ago, which were stacked in a pile by ancient hunters. And this finding completely discounted some old assumptions about the Mongolian people in the past. They were long thought to be herding societies, but these findings show that perhaps they were big hunters on mountain ice. Wow, sometimes just talking about this just makes me feel super grateful to be alive today. Although we are all wimps now, just going outside when it's cold, you know, I'm already looking for the outdoor heater. Where's the outdoor heater? <laughs> What are we in ancient times? In our number 6 spot we have Iron Age Tunic. Apparently as Norway's glaciers begin to melt, archaeologists are beginning to uncover a ridiculous amount of ancient treasures and some say it is about 2000 plus items to date. One of the most notable items in my opinion is some recovered clothing that was found. Honestly not one item is better than the other, they all tell a story from the past and help us better understand how mountain populations lived, but still I think it is so cool cool to see that they found some clothing that's approximately from 300 AD, an Iron Age tunic to be exact. That's not that old though compared to some of the other items that were found on this dig that were approximately 4,000 years old, but still, pretty cool. And one of the older items that was found is in our number 5 spot today, which is the walking stick. Now this item also is not as old as some of the throwing darts that were found, but it's so unique and cool that I had to put it on the list. It's not just any old walking stick. It's a walking stick with runic inscription. Whoa, so cool. I actually have rocks with ruins on them at home that I bought from like a new AG store and I love to look at them. Ruins are truly fascinating and quite beautiful, so I'm a big believer in symbology and the energy and power infused in symbols, so anyways, when I saw this recovered walking stick from the 11th century AD, I kind of freaked out and needed to share. In our 
number four spot, we have arrowheads. This is actually so cool. The entire video has been so fun to research, but finding this out was very interesting. I definitely need to go to museums more. I don't think I knew that I enjoyed history so much. Anyways, in 2003, a hiker was walking in a mountain pass near Sion, Switzerland, when he came across some treasures. Not gold, sadly, but what he found were items that are arguably way cooler from a Stone Age hunter from over 3,000 years ago. They were fragments of a bow, an arrow case, arrowheads, and leg coverings, all believed to be revealed due to the ice in the glaciers melting due to the rapidly changing climate. Pretty crazy. Imagine just going for a hike and discovering some ancient artifacts. I bet you there will never be a more interesting moment in your life. Although fine, the birth of your future child could be fairly special too. In our number three spot, we have the Viking whisks. Technically not considered ancient artifacts, but I thought this was cool and it needed an honorable mention. The melting of glaciers in Norway has actually revealed a lost mountain pass, and with it, hundreds of Viking artifacts have been discovered. The pass was discovered back in 2011, as ever since, the glaciers have continued to melt and more and more artifacts have been recovered. Covered. The archaeologists believe the pass was used from the Roman Iron Age 300 AD to the Viking Age 1000 AD. From horseshoes to sled fragments to wooden needles to wooden whisks, all kinds of artifacts have been recovered. One of the most unique items include a Viking mitten and a blue textile rug. Wow, imagine finding a rug frozen on a mountain. Also, it's just wild to think that the Vikings had rugs. All I can think of when I think of Vikings is war, so it's probably just me and my limited imagination due to my limited knowledge of history. In our number two spot, we have arrowheads. Over 100,000 artifacts were recently uncovered in a place called Nunalik in Alaska. These artifacts belong to the Yupik peoples who lived there. There have been stories told over many centuries of a gruesome massacre that occurred during the bow and arrow war days, which was a series of long, brutal battles. Up until recently, the area had been frozen in the subsoil known as permafrost. The most notable items that were found were the slate arrow points that further proved the stories that have been told about these war times. Although these items aren't technically ancient, they are truly a wonder for archaeologists to discover and I thought it needed to be on this list. In our number one spot, we have an ancient lunchbox. A 3,500 year old lunchbox was discovered in Switzerland in the Swiss Alps. No, it didn't have a 3,500 year old cheese sandwich in it, but it did have traces of ancient cereal. Whoa, some ancient dude was just walking around the Alps eating an ancient version of Lucky Charms. The lunchbox is a Bronze Age wooden container, and apparently the food traces were of wheat and barley or rye grains. The lunchbox was made from Swiss pine, and its rim was made from willow, sewn together with European larch twigs. It was found in a melting ice patch in 2012. That's incredible. Probably my fave find on this list, but anything to do with food just makes me excited. Excuse me as I go pour myself a bowl of Lucky Charms. Feel free to join me if you like. Number 10, abandoned whiskey. All right, here we go. Part one and two of this list was pretty dark, so we'll kick this part three off with 10-year-old McKinley whiskey. An explorer found the crates in the hut of Ernest Shackleton. Inside were these frozen bottles of scotch, all the way from 1907. This may be the best discovery on this list, but it's been locked up, of course, obviously, such a historical find. But you'll be happy to know a sample was given to Scottish distiller White and McKay. Yeah, they're currently studying this recipe to try and bring it back to life. Imagine seeing Ernest Shackleton's whiskey in stores on shelves. I'd be like, oh, what? Okay, debit. Number nine, surgical notebook. Whenever explorers find notebooks, I'm so interested right off the bat. Maybe I've played too much Zelda, I don't know, but notebooks feel very national treasure to me when you find them. This notebook here once belonged to a surgeon, believe it or not. It's over 100 years old and it was found in a frozen hut in Antarctica, and the owner was George Levick. He was a photographer and, of course, a surgeon who traveled with the last expedition of Robert Scott. This expedition was from 1910 to 1913. Now, the book itself was completely frozen and the bindings were completely toast, but the parts that they can read today is pretty historical. You can still read descriptions of photos that George took at Cape Adair. Like his first observation, all those notes that he took down, we can still read those, so it's amazing. Imagine in 100 years you find a notebook 
and it's just a bunch of like crazy S's that we used to draw back in school. Like those pointy, like one of these, hang on. This is Disney Channel, the guy would be like, he nailed it, that was perfect. Number eight, the Glacier Girl. Before you get worried, this next one is a plane, not a woman. I got you back. A P-23 aircraft was discovered in Greenland surrounded in ice. Now this was during World War II in July 1946, when six P-38 fighter planes were ordered to make an emergency landing in Greenland due to, you know, lousy weather conditions and of course, low visibility. The crew was saved, but the lockhead had to be abandoned, sadly. Never to be seen again for 50 years. It was then dug out of 264 feet of snow and ice, and it took years to finally get this plane back in action. She's known as the Glacier Girl, and in 2007, Lewis Energy CEO, Rodney Lewis, bought the plane. Number seven, million year old plant. Back in 2019 in, of course, Greenland, a preserved fossil of a million year old plant was discovered. We love it. This was under the ice near a secret Cold War military camp. Yeah, an ancient flower found at a Cold War military camp. What a headline that would be. In 1959, Project Iceworm was underway. Now, I mentioned that project on this channel here before, and that in itself is a pretty bizarre frozen adventure in history, okay? Eventually, the project was scrapped and it was abandoned. Now, cut to 2019, it was rediscovered, and scientists at the University of Vermont found parts of a million-year-old flower. Not what you'd expect to find under a secret Cold War base, you know? He's like, oh, it's, uh, oh, it's kind of nice. The fragments were all so well preserved that it looked like the flower had died recently. Not, you know, a million years ago. Studying these plants can also provide clues on our future and where our current plants might end up. Number six. Three Inca mummies. Discovered by John Reinhardt on March 16, 1999, near the summit of La Lilico, so around 7,000 meters up in the sky, this is near Argentina and Chile borders. This is far away. Further studies found that they were most likely sacrificed all in the name of a religious Inca ritual around the year 1500. Yeah, so quite a while ago. They were found in a small opening less than two meters deep under the ground, so again, this discovery was shocking. They looked like they were just asleep, but in reality, they died sometime around the 1500s. They're some of the most well-preserved mummies in the world. They now rest at an exhibition at the Museum of High Altitude Archaeology in Salta, Argentina. So specific, Museum of High Altitude Archaeology. Number five, Allen Hill's Meteorite. Okay, this next one is literally out of this world, so buckle up. Back in December 1984, American meteor hunters discovered this fragment in Allen Hills, Antarctica. The meteor was appropriately named Allen Hills 84001, and this rock was speculated to come from Mars. And in 1996, a scientist claimed that he discovered bacteria from the microscopic fossils on the meteorite. Now, this news, of course, spread very quickly, and everybody started losing their goddamn minds. Bill Clinton even chimed in. He made a speech about possible discoveries in space, right? Everyone's freaking out. Could this be aliens? Yeah. Yeah, the scientific community later said this was not the case after further studies, but hey, never say never. Feels like we're closer to finding life with James Webb right now, honestly. I'm, I'm afraid to hit refresh. It's like, here's 700 galaxies. You don't matter. I'm like, thanks, James. We love it. Keep snapping those pics. Number four, Otzi the Iceman. Discovered in September 1991, this mummy was found on the border of Austria and Italy. He's Europe's oldest known natural mummy. Most of the 45-year-old man from the Copper Age was left in rather great condition, surprisingly. A 5,000-year-old man was found in ice, so I hate to say this, but you lose this round, Captain America. I see you in the comments. I'm sorry, I had to, I had to get you out of here one day. Before he passed away in the Italian Alps, Otzi had a number of health problems. He had arthritis, Lyme disease, he was lactose intolerant, which is just horrible. Thanks to science, we now know that Otzi, the Iceman, was sharpening his tools right before his untimely death. So he fought until the end. Number three, three kittens. Don't worry, they are all okay. Spoiler alert. I had to throw that in because, you know, I care about you. Back in 2020, an oil worker named Drayton Dewish found three kittens all frozen to the ground near Drayton Valley. Now, it was mid-January, everything is frozen. This was near an oil well that he'd been working at. On Facebook, they posted about how the three kittens were all males and they were all dewormed, and now they were all living under the same roof, much warmer with a happy family. So, happy ending, there we go. He got them out of the ice by using coffee to melt the ice. How amazing is that? I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Coffee saves lives. That's it, double doubles. Ooh, every morning. I was frozen outside before, and then I was dethawed myself with a nice French vanilla. Number two, message in a frozen bottle. Okay, here we go. Now that song, message in a bottle, it's gonna be stuck in everyone's head watching this. Best song from Guitar Hero 2, hands down. 
that and Surrender by Cheap Trick. What a time, right? So fun. Anyways, back in 1959, back on track, a geologist named Paul Walker, great name, buried a message in a bottle. He wanted to make a lasting statement about climate change, so he put this frozen message underneath rocks near a glacier in 1959. And then cut to 2013, what do we find? Said message in a bottle. The message inside was to measure the length from that point to the edge of a glacier, but by 2013, said glacier had shrunk down 200 feet. So the scientist really did show us. He was like, eh, hey, trust me, in 50 years, I'm gonna get you with this. Imagine he put the wrong note in. They open it up, it just says milk, eggs, bread. Is this a grocery list? This is definitely a grocery list. God damn it. Number one, Ice Age art. Ancient artwork, this time from the Colombian Amazon. Thing is, unlike other drawings found in the ceilings of tombs, this canvas stretched about eight miles and it was all frozen. It was just a wasteland. This should have never been found. The paintings are even more impressive. They date back to 12,000 years ago. These were made near the end of the last ice age. Yeah, the end of the last ice age, we're doing doodles. Are you kidding me? I can't even go to the store if it's snowing out. I'm like, nah, I'm just gonna order in, screw that. This guy's making art. Miles of art. These were found in 2017, but it was only last year where they went public with said findings. Those findings being paintings of elephants, massive sloths, horses from the Ice Age, snakes, birds, deer, etc. This is now one of the largest collections of rock art in South America. Yeah, is it pregnant women or the origins of the Ninja Turtles? Art, we don't know, couldn't tell you. Signing us off with number 10 is Otzi the Iceman, which I'm sure all of you have heard of. In 1991, hikers Erica and Helmut Simon found the body of what they thought was the victim of a modern mountaineering accident, but what they really actually found were the remains of a prehistoric human in the Alps who had been preserved in ice for 5,300 years. That makes him the oldest known natural human mummy in Europe. And to be fair, I didn't even know it was a contest. I didn't even know there were more than just him. He seemed to have been murdered as he crossed the valley since an arrowhead was found in his left shoulder, but cuts on his hand indicated he might have removed it. He also had cerebral trauma, so doctors theorized he must have died from blood loss and his injuries. He had 61 tattoos, advanced gum disease, gallstones, hardened arteries, and he also had parasite eggs in his intestines. So all in all, Otzi was struggling even when he was alive. What's interesting is that based off his stomach contents, his last meal was estimated to be the equivalent of modern day prosciutto. Technology is so advanced, they even managed to study his vocal cords and come up with what they think his voice might have sounded like. And that was in 2016, 25 years after he was discovered. That's insane. Coming in at number nine are the missing parents. If global warming has any pros whatsoever, it's the fact that the melting ice is revealing a lot of things once hidden. In 2017, the frozen bodies of a Swiss couple were found who had gone missing 75 years prior. Marcelin and Francine Dumoulin had gone to milk their cows on the 15th of August 1942, but they never returned. Their seven kids said they never stopped looking for them so they could actually give them the funeral that they deserved. The bodies were found on a glacier near a ski lift at an altitude of 8,600 feet. The bodies were near each other and both were in World War II-esque looking clothing, and according to to their youngest daughter, that day was the first time Francine had actually gone with her husband. She was always pregnant so she could never climb the glacier usually, so what bad luck is that? The first time she actually gets to go and she ends up freezing to death. At number 8 we have the battlefield. May 23rd, 1915, Italy began a war with Austria-Hungary in order to annex certain regions that had mostly Italian residents. A lot of the fighting took place at Corno de Cavento which is 11,051 feet high. Both sides had to to work, fight, survive, and win in those critical conditions. They built roads, tunnels, cableways, telephone lines, entire villages of shacks, you name it, they built it. The Austrian Corps of Engineers even built something called the Ice City, which was a bunch of complex tunnels, dorms, and storerooms dug out of the glacier. As the ice on the glacier is melting, the old garrisons are starting to re-emerge. A full tunnel was excavated, which was in the same state it had been in 90 years prior. 90 years. That's a hell of a long time. Straw bunk beds, a telephone operator station, a metal stove, even wood to heat the area. It was all just there. The people at the site said it was like walking into a defrosted refrigerator. And they didn't just find war relics like bullets and helmets. They found food, bandages, a deck of cards, dirty laundry, the personal belongings of these men as well. Now it's open to the public and available for visiting, you know, if you can make the climb up there. 
Filling our number 7 slot are the Roman artifacts. It's always cool when you find something miles away from its origin because figuring out why and how it was transported is fun in and of itself. Or is that just me? Am I just lame? Let me know. <laughs> the Schneiderjagd Pass is a route that links two alpine valleys together and is usually used by people going from Italy to the north. Scientists also believe the pass has been used for thousands of years so a fair amount of trash has collected there over time from all of us. The so called trash they're talking about is not trash at all. They're actually objects and artifacts which distinctly corresponds to a certain period in time. A bunch of artifacts hailing from the Roman Empire were found there. A belt for a tunic, shoe nails, coins and even cloak pins. They think perhaps ruins that are located near the place they found the artifacts could have been an old Roman settlement or outpost. I know this one might just sound like a really boring history lesson to a lot of you but it's just interesting to imagine like oh a Roman soldier was probably really far away away from home, walking through the blistering cold to get to England or Germany or wherever and these were his coins, like how many hands did these coins pass through? Food for thought, or maybe not, maybe you can just skip this point, I don't know. Now at number 6 is the Teodul Pass Mercenary. The mysterious man was unidentified but it's believed he fell into a crevice above Termat sometime in the 17th century. I mean that's a broad range of 17th century, it was a long time. A couple climbing the glacier in 1984 found his body, his sword, his daggers, pistol and bags. The name of the exhibit his stuff is displayed in is called the Teodor Pass Mercery which is unfortunate because if they had just waited a little bit they would have been told by researchers that he wasn't a mercenary at all. He was most likely just a wealthy trader who was going to Switzerland from Italy. The shoehorns found in his shoes are actually the oldest shoehorns ever discovered. He also had a bunch of pocket knives and amulets on him which begged the question of why he needed amulets all the way up in the Alec Glacier. I mean, what are you doing with those things, young man? Coming in at number 5 is the plane. Now this one was discovered super recently back in August of last year. Record high temperatures caused the Gorley Glacier in the Bernese Alps to rapidly melt which revealed a crashed American C-53 Skytrooper. They found everything, the wings, the propellers, the hangars, tin cans, spoons used by passengers and everything albeit old was in perfect frozen condition. Well as perfect condition as a crashed plane could be in. So you can you know take that how you will. The Swiss Air Force led the plane's rescue mission in 1946 and their footprints were also perfectly preserved near the crash site. At number 4 is the hand. Rescue teams were called to the Zars Valley because two climbers coming down from a peak saw a hand and two shoes poking out from the Holob Glacier. That's just the thing you want to see while you're on a romantic hike with your loved one, a frostbitten hand. When the rescue teams finally got there they spent two hours freeing a mummified body with ice picks and their bare hands. The remains of the body were DNA matched to a German man who was born in 1943 and who disappeared after setting off on a hike in August 1987. One of the rescue workers claimed the shoes the man were wearing were just simply unsuitable for walking on ice and so he probably just slipped and fell down a crevice. Both of his feet were detached from his body so the fall must have been pretty brutal. That's so scary like imagine that was you, you're at the bottom of this crevice, your feet are literally not even attached at this point, if you scream no one will hear you, you probably have a set amount of food and water before you a starve to death, b freeze to death, or c get buried under snowfall. It would just have been the scariest situation. I'm I'm not here for it. Filling our number three slot are the soldiers. We already know living in trenches during any war would have been hell for anyone living through it. But the Italian and Austro-Hungarian soldiers living in the Alps lived through a different kind of hell. They had to be in battlefields thousands of feet above sea level in minus 30 degree weather. People just hadn't fought on that scale or height before and a lot of people had died, many of them just getting lost to the snow. It was even dubbed the white war. But in 2004, again thanks to global warming, their bodies have started reappearing. First three Austro-Hungarian soldiers were found and every year since then more and more have been found. Now at number 2 is the box of treasure. Yeah, literally a box of treasure. In 2013, an anonymous mountain climber was on Mont Blanc when he found a box in the ice. And mind you, the guy was a seasoned 
mountain climber and he had found tons of items in the snow before like plane parts, wheels, pieces of mineral etc. But he really struck gold with this discovery. The box contained a hundred jewels, I'm talking sapphires, rubies, emeralds, you name it. I mean the value of everything in there was near $300,000 give or take. He literally could have made his life right there if he had just sold them but he decided to be a good person and hand them over to the mayor of Chamonix. We now know the origin of the box was an Air India flight that crashed in the area back in 1966. The weather was horrible and all 117 passengers died and absolutely nothing was ever recovered except bits of wreckage here and there. While looking for the rightful owners of the box, two families claimed it was theirs but authorities just aren't making it easy for them to prove it. Locals believe the mayor and the climber actually have a deal that if the rightful owner isn't found within two years, they'll just split the jewels 50-50, which I really don't get. If the climber was interested in 50% of it, he may have just kept the whole thing and not have told anyone about it. And finally, at number one is the Manitoba hiker. Now Jeff Fryer was a teacher from Manitoba who went on a five kilometer hike in the German Alps back in August of 2018 but never returned home. After not hearing from him, his sister Amanda got worried and his mother, best friend and 400 other volunteers went to search for him. They ended up finding his body frozen over at the base of the Bronick mountain. It seemed like he had just fallen about 60 meters down and that there was no evidence of foul play on his body. Rich Manfield, a fellow rock climber who had been helping with the search, posted on YouTube saying how the area Jeff was climbing may have been smaller peak wise compared to other places, hence it was really underestimated, but it's actually a really tough climb. As an experienced climber himself, he said the ridge line is very precarious and it just takes one slip. If you can't recover from that one slip, you're basically done for. His body was found in a thick brush three kilometers away from the last location he posted on social media from. Well, at least social media is good for one thing in that regard. Thank you.